watching this video. This is Sir uh, Olenjolai Moko, who is going to teach you advanced chemistry. Uh, before I go into the lecture theory of general chemistry, I would like to give you a little bit introduction concerning about this video. First of all, I would like to welcome you into my YouTube channel called the Tanzania Online Elevon Secondary Schools and then in square practice in July, just like the, this is my official YouTube channel. Again, I would like to thank you for watching or taking your time on watching this video right now when I will be sharing critical and even fantastic concepts of advanced chemistry. So, <clears throat> uh, as I said in the previous lectures, that the main focus of these lectures, of this, uh, whether lecture one, lecture two, is uh, according to the syllabus of United Republic of Tanzania, and then uh, uh, the main topic, as we say, that the departments is advanced in chemistry, and then the subject here, subject that we are learning is advanced in chemistry. The main topic is here, no chemistry, because consisting a lot of subtopics. The subtopic is called the atomic structure, called the syllabus, and then the concept we are going to, we are still discussing, is the mass spread parameter. And I will tell you what the meanings of this number, and then this is lecture three. It means I've already taught lecture one, two, and this is lecture three. And then we'll be starting with the homework question that I left in lecture two, at the part of correction. So, uh, uh, in this lecture, I will be continuing on solving problems of how to do computation of maybe relative abundance or isotopic mass or maybe uh, defining some parts of 40, some parts of, uh, of uh, uh, mass spectrometer and finding the, 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 the isotopic masses sometimes because those are the problems that in different style by using the intensity and in some of the questions they can ask you that to write the um, symbols and different issues so I will be with you I'll be teaching you and I will uh, try to uh, to share what I know I don't know everything but I, I just know a little about advanced chemistry and especially for the for the for for the for the advanced in chemistry this program is for the senior students so uh, I don't want to waste much of your time. I would like just to ask you to take all your uh, essential requirements. In case that you want to interact or you want to ask questions about what I have told you, you have to go to them uh, uh, below of this video. You see the comment sections, then ask your questions as well as you can. I would be happy to see because I would like to interact with you uh, by using the digital technologies. Okay, so make sure that you ask at least even one question. That I encourage asking questions because some questions I used to learn myself by asking questions myself or by asking questions maybe the search engine or by asking questions different teachers or by asking questions the chemistry. So I would like also to deliver this concept and even just it like to mentor you on asking questions because we'll understand even complex issues in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a logical manner, in such a way that even some of the people they can get crazy about what you are saying and about what you know concerning about that concept. So make sure also you read the descriptions below the video for more information concerning about this program. So me as a teacher, I have this ruler just for making lines and even for teaching. This is the one of the resources. I have again a piece of chalk. I have again a blackboard. I'm ready. I have also the notes. Uh, and the questions that maybe I'll be using. So I would like to ask, I have also my scientific calculator for the computations. So even yourself, as a senior student, don't watch this video as an entertainment. This is the educational video and this is the training video and it's the most valuable video than ever. So I would like to ask you to take your scientific calculator, take your ruler, take your exercise book, and then take your Pencil in case for the drawings, in case that we have, because for today's lecture will be drawn, uh, uh, we call the mass spectrum. Okay, so make sure that you have all the resources, have a rubber beside you, and even now, this that uh, make sure that your mind is clear, you are not stressed, you are not confused, uh, and then let us go to the business together and do something great for the rest of your life. Okay, so. Let us start with corrections of the homework in lecture two. This is the homework that I offered in lecture two, and I usually that 
I, I, I might be corrections in the next lecture. So the questions were saying that in, uh, magnesium has three stable isotopes of the masses, 23.985, 24.985, and 25.982 <coughs> atomic mass unit. The relative abundances of the three isotopes are this we have been given. Let's try to calculate the atomic mass. I know it was a simple question, uh, but let, let me just help for those who have got uh, who, who have failed to, to, to solve it. So the first step, you can maybe list the data, okay, isotopic masses. It means that you can, the first step, you can list or you can say that data given, what you have been given in this question. So we can let, at let M1, let's say for example, isotopic masses are uh, to be, uh, let isotopic masses. So we can say let isotopic masses, right? Uh, M1 is equal to uh, 23, 20, 0.985. And then this is what it, unit is atomic mass unit. So we used to have dots. And then the second isotopic mass, M2, is equal to 24.985 atomic mass unit. Then again, we have M3. The third isotopic mass so it is what it is 25 okay point twenty nine eight two atomic mass unit okay the relative abundance of the three isotopes is this so the relative abundance you can also let that let the relative abundance uh relative abundances uh let's say relative abundances can say p1 is equal to what? Is equal to 39.35. And then P2, this is in terms of percent, right? So percent, even if that's not written. 5.0, this is its composition, 65%. Then we have uh, P3, <coughs> which is equal to what? Uh, relative abundances of this one, 39. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not in percentage. It's not in percent. These are intensities. So P3 is equal to 5. Why did they know that is intensities? Because if you sum them, you don't get 100. Okay? So that's the first step. These are the data that will be given. So what are we looking? We are looking for relative atomic mass, or in some of the books, we use this notation. So this is what is required. So, uh, before we got the second step, we mean that we have to recall which formula, or in each case, remember that if you take the percentage of the right of abundance one plus this one plus this one, you won't get 100. So what does it mean? This means that uh, it's not the relative abundances, this is intensities. So you have to recall the formula for the intensities, right? It's a little bit tricky. That's why I wrote that as a concept. So you have to be careful. Because if you divide by 100, you'll be completely wrong. And possibly even most of you have done that mistake. That's why I have to do correction. Okay, so the second step, <coughs> we say that, let us recall, let us recall the formula. So let us recall the formula of computing what? Of computing relative atomic mass in masses to spectrum. So we say that, or I told you in lecture two, relative atomic mass, this will be given as the summation of the product of what? Intensity, intensity times what? Isotopic mass. Say, isotopic masses. So, masses. So, isotopic masses divided by summation of 40 of intensities so intensity so summation of intensity because it is more than one so here if the plural word is intensities okay so again if we use the symbols that we have let the relative atomic mass for this case to be a product of mass one times 40 uh intensity one plus mass two times 40 intensity two or or but yes intensity two and then mass three times 40 intensity three. Don't be confused that to let the intense because you have already let that. 
and that's what bound is called total be given. So here we have to take uh, intensity 1 plus intensity 2 plus intensity 3. So the relative atomic mass, which have been asked me, or sometimes is called average atomic mass. So for this case, we'll be taking mass 1 times a relative abundance 1. So it will be 23 and 20, 0.985 multiplied by what? 39.35. Then we plus, we sort, uh, 24, 20, 9.85 times <coughs> sentence 2, 5.065. Right? And then plus what you have. I said that I must uh, 3, 25, <coughs> 25 .9 a Then we have to multiply with 5.585. Right? 85. And then we divide this with the total abundance which is at 9.35 plus uh, 5.065 plus uh, 5.585. Uh, so the relative abundance for that computation, you have to take your scientific calculator, use it effectively, compute the relative abundance in that case. And then what will you get after finding that? You'll get that. Yes. So it means that you'll take 23. Let, let us do together. 0.9885 multiplied by 39.35. And then we plus with open bracket 24.985 times 5.0. 65 and then plus what 25.982 times 30 times 5.585 and then we divide by 39.35 plus 5.065 plus 5.585 so we get 24.309. That's what even myself that I've got. So this is the response. So let me just put it nearby the, the lens or the camera so you might see. Do you see the response? So even yourself, you have to get the response like this one. So the response, the relative atomic mass, it is 24.039 atomic mass unit. So therefore, when we have been asked that calculate the average atomic mass, so we say that therefore the average, we write like this one, the average atomic mass of what? The average atomic mass of magnesium, magnesium is 24, and it is true because that the atomic mass of magnesium. So this is 24, 20, Three zero nine and then four. So if we write the response in three decimal places, and so then we find this atomic mass unit. So it is twenty four point three one atomic mass unit. So this is the final response of what we have been asking. Well, <clears throat> good. So let us go to another question. So let us go to another question. I believe you have understood. In case you have any question, please don't just state yourself. Uh, let me just see, speak a little bit about this telephone number. This is my telephone number. In case you want to offer your sense giving to God, 
in order to support the cost of running or the running cost and even the initial cost, some of the facilities are still required on this channel. You may send your sense even by using this number. That's the meaning that why I have put it there. It's not mandatory, but you just like it from your heart. Okay. So, <clears throat> again, we have the first example. See? And then this is the example four. Again, it has a concept eh, for you to understand and even to pay attention when we be solving. The question states like this one. That copper, <coughs> there's two naturally, there's two naturally occurring isotopes. Carrying isotopes, copper 63, <coughs> have an atom, has atomic mass, atomic mass of 6226. 96 right atomic mass unit and an abundance and that copper 63 has an abundance has an abundance of 65.15 percent what is atomic mass and the question now, what is atomic, atomic mass of the second isotope, of the second, of the second isotope? Remember the course of mass spectrometer is new, you haven't learned it uh, during the Oliver studies. So we are introducing it to you for the first time. Given the average atomic mass of copper, given the average, you know the meanings of average, it means relative atomic mass. The average atomic mass, average atomic mass of 40 of copper. So given the relative atomic mass of copper, this is, 63.546 atomic mass unit. So we have to find the mass or the atomic mass. As I told you that this concept will teach you how to find a relative atomic mass and then again so will teach you how to find uh, how to find isotopic masses or intensities or abundances. Okay, and sometimes when you find the atomic mass, uh, some of the questions that maybe an element is hidden, this is not no, it's not mentioned. So you have to identify which element is. But for the common elements. So solution. So the first step, as I used to teach you, we say that let us have data given in this question, right? So to have, so the question said that copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. How many isotopes? Two isotopes, not three. So copper 63 is the first isotope, which have atomic mass of 62, <coughs> that uh, atomic mass means isotopic mass atomic mass unit, and an abundance of 65.15%. This is the abundance right now. It's not the intensity. What is atomic mass of the second isotope, given the average atomic mass of the copper, is that one. So we say that uh, isotopic, we have been given isotopic mass, isotopic mass, let's say mass one of copper, is equal to 
atomic mass of copper it is 62.92.96 atomic mass unit again so isotopic mass isotopic mass 2 of the second isotope this is of 40 of copper this is what is required so you see today we have been asked what we, we used to have in the questions so or used to be given in the many previous questions then we have intensities or you have no, or what abundance the relative abundance of the first mean that this is P1 or 40 of the first copper which is copper 63 this one will be given as what 65.15 cent then we'll be given the relative atomic mass relative atomic mass of 40 of copper the average atomic mass right now will be given as 63.5 <coughs> or six atomic mass unit. So that is all about the first step. So now we are going for the second step. The second step we say that we call the formula of finding relative atomic mass of 40 of an element. The element there is what it is called. So I told you, call what I told you, relative atomic mass. This is equal to the summation for this case, that is case two. Now we have relative, relative abundance. I'll be repeating these formulas several times. Relative abundance times what in isotopic mass. The isotopic mass, this is numerator, and then denominator, we have summations of abundance, which is equal to 100. So today we are given the relative atomic mass. So because there are two isotopes, so the relative atomic mass in terms of the symbols of the two isotopes will be isotopic mass 1 times relative abundance 1 plus isotopic mass 2 times relative abundance 2 divided by what? By 100. So this is the formula. So what are we looking for? We are looking the isotopic mass of the second isotopes. So we are, we are not given the M2. And all the variables, we are not given the M2 and even the P2 is not given here. We are not given. So it means that in case maybe you want to make the subject or you want just to simplify and make the M2 the subject, they have, can make the M2 the subject, okay? As H, a good chemistry. <clears throat> uh, in case you have any questions, please ask in the comment section. Sh share this video with your classmate. Share it with the pre form five that you, you know. Share it with a form five student. Share it with a form six student. Share it with diploma students who are pursuing science. So if you cross multiplication, we have one hundred times relative atomic mass. Then we have mass of the first and the first isotopic mass times percentage one mass two then times relative abundance two so you want to make this one the subject right so that the third step so the third step we say that make m2 the subject because we are looking for it not the relative atomic mass because here we make the relative atomic mass the subject so the m2 is equal to 100 times relative atomic mass, then minus products of isotopic mass 1 and abundance 1 divided by percentile 2. So 100 since the area of atomic mass will be given, we know it. Uh, the mass 1, the mass, isotopic mass of the first isotope, we know. The relative abundance of the first, uh, first isotope, we know. What we don't know, we don't know this one. So that's the fourth state. So the fourth state, we say that let us use P1 to compute it, to compute or to find what are P2. 
or 40 of the second isotopes. It means the relative abundance of the second isotope. How do we get it? Remember that, and I would like to tell you that I told you, if you take the first relative abundance plus the second relative abundance, uh, if the atom has only two isotopes, the response is 100. So it means that to get, if you make it, uh, the relative abundance to the subject is equal to 100 minus 1. P1. So then we say that P2 is equal to 100 minus what? 65, 81.5%. So the second relative abundance, if you make subtraction there, 0 minus 5 is 5. Then we have 9. 9 minus 1 is what? It is 8. And then here we remain is 4. 4 minus, no, here we remain is 9, right? So 9, cost is, it was 10. 10, yeah, okay, so. Wait a moment. So if you do these subtractions, we find that we get to it because with this one we get set at five, we get set four point eight five percent. Cause five plus five is zero plus one. Zero, then yes, set at five, that is forty, that is maybe set at five or forty five. Yes, set at five, set at five, yeah, okay, set at five percent. So then now uh, we can compute to it. So the fifth step, the fifth step, now we can compute to it. We can compute uh, the isotopic mass of the second isotope. How? So isotopic mass of the second isotope is equal to 100 times what? <coughs> times 63, 25, 4, 6, okay? Then we subtract with the product of as one, which is 62, 20, 90, 92, 96, multiplied by what in by percentage one, which is 65, 21, 5. And then the answer of the numerator will divide with 74, 20, 8, and the second percentage. So you just use your scientific calculator, which I believe that you bought it purposefully, and the one of the purpose is to perform this, to help you in the, in the kind of the computation like this one. So to simplify, we just find this product, and then we take the, this product minus this one. You can use any way that you to find that multiplication. So it's not just a great thing. Okay, so this is 96. 65.215 okay and then we take what that is uh, 53 54.6 minus the response divided by 74.85 so the response is 60 so it means that mass 2 is equal to 64.6 into decimal places 0.6 Six nine eight okay. atomic mass unit. So the questions ask us that is the mass of a second isotope. So therefore, you say that the mass of second isotope, mass of second isotope is sixty four and six nine eight in three decimal places. So this is the final response. You see, you enjoy? I believe that you're enjoying advanced chemistry and you're enjoying the topic of general chemistry. Stay tuned. Okay, so that is all about the example four of mass spectrum. <clears throat> I believe you enjoy and I believe that you are getting closer to closer to master uh, this concept of mass spectrum. Okay, so let us go to another question, which is example five. Okay, so example five right now, this is the question which has been asked in this uh, advanced chemistry one review, uh, advanced certificate secondary education examination uh, uh, in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. So it has been asked, this question has been asked in 2015. 
Jenny, so it was 2015. Question number no, 2016. So it has been asked in 2016, year 2016. Question number 2C. So let me solve it for you. So this is example 4. Example 5, sorry. <coughs> and this one you have to refer uh, advanced this certificate secondary education examination nectar of 2015 paper one okay paper one and in case of review in case of review you'll find these questions in page 78 remember that in case you don't have these textbooks or the questions and answers books, means review books, please go to the descriptions below and then you'll see how you can order them online. You can ship it, uh, I can ship it locally, it means that in the Native Republic of Tanzania. So make sure that you follow the instructions that are required there. But watch also the video concerning about the textbook and reference materials. Okay, so this is uh, it was a question to section A, question two. But C, the questions was testing the cost of mass spectrometer. So it begin like this. We say that it say that the mass spectrum, okay, the mass spectrum of an element, of an element, of an element, of an element, of an element. enables the relative abundance the relative abundance enables the relative abundance <coughs> of each isotope of each isotope of the element of the element Of the element to be determined to be determined that are relating that are relating to mass spectrum mass spectrum of an element X of an element X whose atomic number whose atomic number is 35 Appear as indicated in the table below. Indicated in the table below. Study the data and answer the following questions. Study the data and answer the following questions. If you are joining in into this fantastic lecture, I would like to welcome you into this third lecture of general chemistry in advanced chemistry according to the syllabus of the United Republic of Tanzania. So stay tuned. Study the data. Study the data and answer and answer the questions that follows. Questions that follows. <coughs> Mass number of isotopes.
verse number 5 so tell and then here in another column we have relative abundance a relative abundance okay so you have two columns and then we have also two rows three rows first row or first second row and third row so here we have 79 and here we have given 81 here we have 5.5 is it 5.5 percent 50.5 so this is 50 we're typing error in review it is 50 not 5 percent and then the other one is 49 because remember that the total percentage or total relative abundance always should be 100 so these are the questions Define the isotope. You remember the definitions of isotope you learned during your form two. What what is what is asked uh, isotope in atomic structure? Define the term isotope. So define the term isotope. Then number two, write the conventional write the convention 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 symbol convention symbols for the two isotopes. the two isotopes, isotopes of 40 of element of element X of an of element X <clears throat> then calculate the relative the relative atomic mass atomic mass of X to see a significant figure to see a significant very significant figures. If you do this, you will get five marks. So we have a fine exam question which has been asked me to A-level students who graduated in, in 2000 16 is it 2015 or 2016 2016 not 15 in the power one of 2016 remember that general general is the content of paper one advanced chemistry or advanced chemistry one okay well so then uh, let us read the questions quickly and then we solve it Okay, the mass spectrums of an element enable the relative abundances of each isotopes of the elements to determine to be determined at the main functions of 40 of mass spectrometer, which give us the mass spectrums as I told you in lecture one and two. Data relate, relating to the mass spectrums of an element X whose atomic number is 75 appears as indicated in the table below. So the atomic number is 75. Atomic number is 75. So because you have written the portions, I would like just to underline some of the keywords. Atomic number is 85. Start the data and answer the questions that follows. 
So these are the questions. Are uh, this the that or this the given table? Define the table. You have to draw a good table after that I've been drawing quickly. Define the term isotope or the means of isotope. Write the conventional symbols for the two isotopes of element X. This is the element X, we don't know it. So the names, is this the symbol for the element? So the element, the symbol of elements is not maybe, uh, maybe Cielo or Na. It means, when I say Na, it means that for sodium or Mg, no, it is X. Then calculate the relative atomic mass of X into seven significant figures, and then so we have five marks. Okay, so the question is very interesting. In some of the reference notes, okay, in some of the reference notes, you may find the same question which have been, yeah, the same questions which have been done. So I will, I, 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 I will solve this question in two ways or under two conditions. Let me start with the given condition. So solution. So the solutions we have defined first the term isotope. So the term isotope is not new in the life of chemistry. So isotopes, this you say that are the elements are the elements which have the same, just to remind you, the same atomic number but different, <coughs> different atomic mass, different atomic masses. Are the definitions of the only what isotope? Okay, even if that maybe you know the other ones, there's no problems. Okay, so we have to go to Roman two. Roman two, I will do it in two conditions. Write the conventional symbol for the two isotopes. So the way we write symbols according to the chemistry of uh, of all levels, special that may form one. When I've been learning right, form one and form two, especially form two, when we've been learning about uh, the concepts of isotopes, atomic mass, atomic number, in the topic known as the atomic structure of the form two. So when you write, here we used to have uh, uh, a number we call the atomic number. Atomic number. And then here as a superscript or left of the element symbol. We used to have atomic mass. So for this now, we say that uh, the means that right the conventional symbols. So we say that the symbols of element X, element X are this. So we say that X. So we say that for this case we have. Remember that we have been given because they have the same atomic number of set of five. So this is five set of five, and this is the first atomic mass or the atomic mass for the first isotopes, which is seventy nine. And also we have another conventional symbol with atomic mass of set of five, and then. That atomic number of 75 and atomic mass of 81. So this is the response for that question. So the second condition that I want to challenge, let me, let me challenge you. What if the atomic number you are not given? What if, for example, a big US forces like this one, but the atomic number is not given? How are you going to write? So we say that this is just like an a node is extra. I want to take you some extra mile. We say that if Atomic number is not given, then the conventional symbol, because there are some three questions like that ones, symbols of what? Of element X, of element X will be like this. This is X, we have our atomic mass, and then 79. Again, we have against our element X, atomic number Z, here it is 81. Because the atomic number 
is not known. The weak number is not known. Okay? So then, uh, we have to go to Roman 3 now. In case you have any question, please ask your questions in the comment section. And also, don't be selfish. Share with your friends. Share with your classmates of the Form 5. Uh, classmates from the, uh, of the Form 5. Share with the Form 6. Share these materials with the Pre-Form 5. Okay? So don't be selfish because even myself, your teacher, I'm no longer, or I'm not a selfish. That's why I'm providing this material to you. Which calculate the relative atomic mass of X into seven significant figures. So for this one, we say that, uh, no need for that because the big event starter. So the first system, we have to go to the competitions with competition. So recall the formula. The formula of finding relative atomic mass, relative atomic mass, when we say that the relative atomic mass is equal to what? Is equal to summations of what? Products of abundances. So suppose that that is isotopic mass 1 times percent relative abundance 1 plus, because uh, that element X has two isotopes times isotopic mass 2 times 30 times relative abundance, abundance 2, not 3, I'm sorry. And then we say that we divide because it's an average. With the summation of what? The summation of abundance is because it's in percentage, then the sum is 100. So relative atomic mass in terms of mass, uh, atomic mass unit. We say that we have it is seven.